Velasquez undefeated at 15-0-1. He hails from Mexico. Rosales from Nicaragua. They're about the same age, but Rosales has had more than double the professional fights as Joselitos. I think if you're Christopher Rosales, part of the game plan has to be to tread water in these early rounds and try to take advantage in the later ones. Velasquez has only been 10 rounds one time in his career. Christopher Rosales, very familiar with deep round territory. Nice body shot, left hook by Velasquez. It was set up by a, a, a well-timed jab. I mean, that, that's something that, that's a fallacy in boxing where a shorter man can't out-jab a taller man, especially a man with a long reach like Rosales. But Velasquez did just that with timing. Oh, big right hand by Velasquez. Big power, but the timing is the most impressive part by Joselito Velasquez right now. He's timing the distance and breaking the, the, the reach of the longer, taller Rosales. That eye, that eye on Velasquez is going to be an issue the later this fight goes, especially if he starts getting hit with those jabs. You can see him pawing at it right now. So if you're Rosales, you want to take advantage of this. And you saw that left hand from Rosales smoke him right on the right side of his face. He couldn't see that punch coming. Yeah, an experienced fighter like Rosales will see that closing eye. It'll be like having a bullseye on it. It'll be target practice for that eye. So Velasquez may have to show some urgency uh, in this next couple of rounds. Sergio, is there anything his corner can do to help alleviate that sort of injury? It's not exactly like a swelling of a punch, though he does land a nice left hook again for Velasquez. Listen, as long as it isn't, it isn't shut completely. Well, right hand connects for Rosales, and Velasquez almost took a knee. Rosales' best punch is a chopping right hand, and considering that he landed so cleanly right there, Velasquez took that, but his knees buckled. And that right hand was nothing to do with that right eye shutting. Well, Sergio, you say it all the time. It's the punch you don't see that can hurt you. And right now, Velasquez ain't seeing much. No, he's not. But it's not because of that right hand. That's just, I mean, the, the right eye. It's because of that right hand of Rosales. Big left again for Rosalito. It's the right hand and that reach advantage that's causing trouble. Looking around on social media, seems like most of the boxing journalists have Rosales up by a round or even two. So let's see what Velasquez can get done here in the 10th and final frame. And so do I. I just think it's a nip and tuck, but I, I'd rather be Ro Rosales right now. I think he's up right now. Sergio, you mentioned this at the start of the fight. It's a net positive. You're a guy like Rosales for being active, fighting as many times as he Whoa! Can. Rosales connecting, and now Velasquez having to go backwards. And this is the guy just staying in the gym, staying active, and you can see that sharpness to his game tonight. Nothing but experience and activity. Add that with toughness. I mean, that's a perfect trifecta to do what he's doing. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is not our main event. It's the first fight of the night. And this is this is going to be a learning experience for Velasquez if he can get past this. But for Rosales, it's just an incredible comeback. Still plenty of power in the hands of Velasquez. Can he land a game-changing punch? Four clean shots landed there by Velasquez. Rosales, I mean, excuse me, Rosales. Velasquez didn't even move his head. That is a sign of fatigue. He's getting hit too cleanly with these shots by Rosales now. You can see Velasquez breathing heavy. He is tired. Well, he's been in a war, Sergio. Yeah, but they've been con uh, uh, concerned about him being tired since the early rounds. So obviously, Eddie Reynoso saw something early. Certainly was a lot of pressure on the shoulders of both these fighters, but especially Velasquez. He's never fought in front of this many people in this environment with this much pressure. And Velasquez trying to clinch again. Instead of punching in a fight so close, you should be thinking about punching and not clinching. Rosales trying to fight him off. Got to have some urgency in this situation for both guys. Matchroom boxing, very invested in 112, 115 pound divisions. A win for either one of them could lead to a lucrative payday in their next fight. No, no, no. 
There you have Velasquez clenching on again, and the referee giving him a warning. 20 seconds left. The 12th has belonged to Rosales. I think the fight has belonged to Rosales. I mean, just what a performance by the former title challenger, title holder. Incredible battle here in Glendale. After 10 rounds of action here in Glendale, Arizona, we go to the judges' score totals. Dennis O'Connell, Tim Cheatham, and Chris Wilson all scored this bout identically. 97 to 93 for your winner by unanimous decision. De Managua, Nicaragua, Christopher El Atigo Rosales. And this is our tale of the tape. Super middleweight division, 168 pounds. Adrian Luna on the right of your screen, obviously a veteran. 34 professional fights, 24 wins, 16 KOs, but Diego Pacheco, five inch height advantage and a six inch reach advantage. He is undefeated. You know, when a, when a young fighter starts slowing down his, his rhythm and looking for the right shot instead of, 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 of speed, landing one shot really cleanly instead of three of them really fast, that's when you know you're in. And as I say that, that's all it took. One clean shot by Diego Pacheco. Timing him, waiting him out, landed nicely. I guess the answer to how many punches Luna could take with zero. And then digging down to the body, not forgetting the body. And Luna's down for a second time. That's the sign of maturity. That's the sign of a fighter that's evolving into a shark. This could get real dangerous for Luna as he smashes his gloves together. Pacheco going for the gusto. Luna going for the haymakers, but not landing. Credit to Luna, nicknamed Tyson. He's going to go out on his shield. Diego cocking that right hand. That was a good body shot by Pacheco right before that, that throw punch. I like that, Sergio. He's done some head hunting in this fight, but he's staying committed to the body shot. Great body shot. I think that the time has passed for Pacheco. I think he should calm down now and go back to the jab. Oh, he doesn't know how to calm down. Flat on his back. The referee's taking a good look. He might want to stop this and save Luna from himself. Tyson, Tyson Luna has no legs under him. The referee should probably stop this fight. You got the corner is telling him to stop the fight. The corner is telling him to stop the fight. And it is over. The sixth straight knockout for Diego Pacheco, and it wasn't even close. All due, res all due respect to that referee, but he was about to let Luna go back in there and get his head caved in. Julio Cesar Martinez, 27 years old in his fighting prime, five foot two with a 64 inch reach, very similar to Samuel Carmona. A couple of things to watch for early is how Carmona handles the pressure that comes from Martinez. Two fights ago, he defeated Joel Cordova, knocked him down in that fight, but Cordova had success Whoa. when he was applying pressure. The other is accuracy, like you're seeing there. Cordova, uh, I'm sorry, Carmona in that last fight against Cordova, averaged only about 38 punches per round, so he's not a high volume guy. He relies on accuracy and timing to win fights. And usually that's what it takes to beat uh, a whirlwind. Uh, fighters with a big offensive uh, output is just time them with the right shot. Don't try to compete with how much punches they're throwing. You saw that left hook land for Martinez. <laughs> and so far, I'm impressed with what I'm seeing with Carmona. He's timing Martinez with the right shots. He's not going for four or five punches, trying to compete with the combinations, but looking for singles and doubles. Martinez opening up an orthodox stance, but Chris, he is so skilled at bouncing between southpaw and righty. Yeah, sometimes he just fights like Rocky Balboa, where he comes right at you and tries to make it a physical fight. So he is unorthodox, to say the least. Moving well. I think you have to see the majority of these rounds in favor of Carmona. Absolutely. I mean, this is boxing 101 at its best. Not standing in front of an aggressive opponent, moving to the left, moving to the right, sticking him. 
pot shotting them. You can't go punch for punch with a puncher like that that could turn your lights out. You gotta, you gotta outbox guys like Martinez. Now you see I've got him up 49, 46. But if, you cannot panic if you're Julio Cesar Martinez because you have the power edge. You're seeing it right now. This is Martinez's fight, slinging the shots from unexpected angles. That's how you win this fight. You smother him with speed and you smother him with aggression. That's hard to do, though, Sergio, for long stretches of time. It takes a lot of energy. Yeah, but Martinez says this is the best condition he's ever been, one of the best camps he ever had. So you better let him loose now. Yeah, and that's what he said was the biggest thing to come up would come out of this full-time union with Eddie Reynoso. They turned over every stone to make sure that he was as best, as well conditioned as he possibly can be. And he said for the first time in his career, he's got a nutritionist. Well, I don't think a lot of people would have bet a lot of money that Carmona would still be standing in the 12th round. Absolutely but, not. But here he is, and to his credit, he's done it injured. Whoa, there's a flurry from Carmona. Good two punches by Carmona, but he did them, but he pulled back with his head in the air and got caught for it. Nice uppercut on the inside there by Martinez. And there it is again. Yeah, he got caught with a good left hook. He's throwing that. Boy, he is slick, isn't he? He's slick, and now he's boxing. This is boxing. He's not running anymore. The fans can appreciate this. I can appreciate this. Carmona staying in the pocket. He's countering. He's pop-shotting. He's still doing it with one arm. And Martinez is letting him do it. In a close fight, Martinez should be throwing caution to the wind as well. Good body shot from Carmona there. He's having a very good round. Absolutely. Of course, now you'll ask the question, why hasn't he been doing this the last four or five rounds? And now I ask why Martinez is letting him do it. Finally, Carmona is in front of him fighting, and Martinez is not letting go of his hands. So Carmona wins the 12th, but will it be enough? Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds here in Glendale, Arizona, we go to the judges' score totals, and they read as follows. Kevin Scott, 114, 114, a draw. Javier Camacho, 117, 111. Chris Flores, 116 to 112. Both for your winner by majority decision. And still, the WBC flyweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar El Rey Martinez. Chocolatito. 35 years old, he's an inch shorter, and Juan Francisco Estrada will have a two-inch reach advantage. 12 rounds for the WBC Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Here are the unified rules. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. Good overhand right there for El Gallo. Those little chop in hand behind the ear, they can really have a serious effect on you. You keep getting hit with those. Estrada doing a nice job fighting backwards. Oh, he's pot shot each other. Oh, he caught him clean there. Chuck Latino coming forward with reckless abandon. This is what the crowd wanted, and now they're getting it. See, you can see how comfortable Gallo Estrada is against the ropes now. That wasn't the case in their prior two fights. Scores for Chocolatito. That's what you need to see more of. Not one, two, or three punch combinations, five, six, seven punch combinations from Gonzalez. The beginning of that combination was a right to the body. That's 
That's something that Chocolatito always used to be good at. He dissects his opponents and has it comes up with the uppercuts. And there's that right hand to the gut. That set up the four punch combination upstairs. Here's an interesting stat. Through eight rounds, for the first two fights, Chuck Latino landed an average of 34 punches per round. Through eight rounds tonight, an average of 13. Well less than half of his normal output. I think those numbers would be a lot better, though, in these last four. I agree, because now we're seeing the volume that we're accustomed to seeing with Chocolatito. These last two rounds have been, have been vintage Roman Gonzalez. Every fight between these two guys swings like a pendulum. You look at the first fight, when Estrada took control somewhat in the middle rounds of Chocolatito, closed strong. Last fight, a lot of back and forth between these guys. Here you have Estrada in this one, looking like in total control over the first five rounds. For the better part of the last four, it has felt like it's been all Chocolatito. Estrada's doing a nice job in this round, still fighting off the back foot, but landing a lot cleaner than he has in the previous few rounds. I think both of them are landing cleanly in this round. In this round. Good uppercut there from Estrada. Subtle defense by Chocolatito. Everything's not landing cleanly. It's clean shots being landed by both fighters. This fight started slow, but it's finishing fast. Great 12th round. Good body shot by Estrada. That brought down the elbows of Chocolatito. That might have hurt him. We won it a war. Another body shot by Gallo. We're getting it in the 12th. Great round for El Gallo. Gallo closing out like a champ. And it was that body shot that did it. It could go either way. Who won the trilogy? You know, this was supposed to be the fight that set up the rivalry between Chocolatino and Estrada. I don't think anything is settled after this, regardless of what the judges say. I agree 100% with you. We got another version of Pacquiao Marquez here. We might need a fourth. After 12 rounds of action here in Glendale, Arizona, we go to the judges' scorecards. Chris Tellez. 114, 114, a draw. Tim Cheatham, 116, 112. And Dennis O'Connell, 115, 113. Both for your winner by majority decision. And the new WBC and Ring Magazine Super Flyweight Champion of the World.